Okay, here we go, y'all. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to sit with this gentleman, and I, I do interviews all the time. And there are very few people that um tap into a different part of myself and of humanity, tap into uh, everything that that makes me enjoy what I do for a living. This guy's story is so fascinating and it's so unbelievable. If he were not here in front of us, you wouldn't believe that it was possible. You wouldn't believe that, that every word that comes out of his mouth was truth. I knew when I sat down with him before I had to bring him back um, because there was so much to talk about. Let, let me go through his list of accolades before I properly introduce him. Number one, um, he's the highest decorated agent in DEA history. Uh, he was awarded the U.S. Attorney General Award for Heroism at the White House by the Attorney General himself. Um, he received the Federal Bar's Medal of Valor, and he also received the DEA Administrator's Award. Um, and these are just a few awards that we can name on this show before it gets a little too time consuming. Um, he's an author. He's a producer. He is a uh, former uh, DEA agent. Please welcome to the show, Hector Bereas. Hector, what's up, buddy? What's up? I'm glad to be here with you, Sean. Absolutely. You know, Hector, I, I, that intro was a little long, but I could have went on for 10 more minutes giving you an intro. Your story, your accomplishments, your journey, it is nothing short of fascinating and, and just incredible. I mean, I, I, I literally sat with you and I couldn't wait for this day that we could do it again. So welcome back. Thank you. Glad to be back with you, Sean. Absolutely. Okay, Hector, uh, for those who may not know you, you wrote a book um, chronicling your life entitled The Last Narc. Yes, I did. The Last Narc was um, taken correct. from your book and turned into a four-part documentary on Amazon. It highlighted uh, one of the many career milestones that you've had, which was solving the case of kidnapped and tortured DEA agent Kiki Camarena. Can you please, in a, in a quick synopsis, give us an overview of who Kiki Camarena was and just some of the things that you found out in investigating that case? Kiki Camarena was a very prolific, very good undercover DEA agent. He was a friend and colleague of mine. I worked with him in the uh, California area before he was transferred to uh, Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. I worked with him when he was stationed in Fresno, California. He uh, was uh, transferred to Guadalajara to penetrate the big uh, couples of the Guadalajara cartel. And the targets were Ernesto Fonseca Carrillo, La Jefe de Jefes, Basso Bossos. Uh, Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, Rafael Caro Quintero, and El Chapo and, the, and others. Um, he was there. While there, he was kidnapped, taken to the drug lords. He was kidnapped by the DEFS, Mexico's Directorate of Federal Security, which is like RCIA. They, they captured him in front of the... Um, leaving the uh, consulate officer in Guadalajara. He was taken, delivered to these drug lords. He was interrogated for two days, beaten to death while he was being interrogated. And uh, so that's all I knew when I was um, basically assigned to investigate his murder and says that, that these drug lords uh, had um, kidnapped him, tortured him, to death because supposedly they were upset because he had been instrumental in destroying uh, one of the uh, the largest marijuana plantation site in Buffalo, Chihuahua. That's what we thought 
happened to him, this is what I told happened to him before I was assigned to investigate his murder. Uh, as I recruited witnesses from Mexico that were there, percipient witnesses that knew what had happened, how they planned, who planned the kidnapping, how they picked him up, who interrogated him, who beat him, and how he died. In the course of the investigation, I found out that uh, BFS was very much involved, which is Mexico's, like I said, equivalent to our CIA. And I knew, I knew that uh, because I had worked in Mexico before I was assigned this case, that the DFS worked under the AG's control of our CIA. So that made me very curious. Well, in the course of investigating the case, I am told not by one, not by two, not by three, but by four witnesses that one of the interrogators was a CIA operative by the name of Ismael Felix Rodriguez. They told me that Felix Rodriguez, along with some of the capos or drug cartel guys, had uh, interviewed Camarena and that the CIA had a hand in Camarena's murder. As a matter of fact, the witnesses told me that because they had also attended pre abduction meetings, that it was the CIA that was prompting, it was Rodriguez that was prompting the drug lords to pick up our agent. I uh, reported all my findings to the, uh, to, to, the, to the top of the DEA, to Washington, D.C. They told me that I did not have the jurisdiction to investigate another federal agency, that I needed to stay focused on getting evidence on the Mexican couples that were involved. They told me that th to write everything on not official DEA reports involving the CIA, but to report everything in office memorandums, which I did. They told me that the Inspector General's office would, re would, would, would review my reports or my memorandums and that they had the jurisdiction to investigate criminality, transgressions, what have you, of other federal agencies. I believed them, but as time went by, I noticed that, or found out that no, there was no movement towards trying to arrest at least this one CIA operative that tortured Cameron and I interrogated him, is my Infinity Rodriguez. I started to complain. So when I started to complain that the uh, investigation was not moving forward by the Inspector General's office, that I was moving my investigation on the couples um, in Mexico, I, I, I had some arrested and some of them we eliminated, some of them we killed, some of them we arrested. But I was not seeing any movement against uh, Felix Rodriguez uh, on this side of the border. So as I complained, they took me off the case and they sent me to Washington and I was ordered to stop investigating the Camarena murder case, to leave it alone. And um, I was given uh, another assignment in Washington, D.C., which to me uh, was a total cover up. Uh, our government's involvement in the murder of Agent Kiki Camarena. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.